I'm Karen Agnes, the president of the Network of Enlightened Women. I was recently on campus participating in what was supposed to be a debate with the professor. This professor, who has a PhD in women's studies, began her presentation by stating that feminism taught her to reject the debate construct and instead to have uncomfortable conversations. It's time to start a real debate, or as she would like to call it, an uncomfortable conversation on women's studies departments in campus feminism today, drawing attention to the problems so that they might be corrected. A half century after the publication of Betty Friedan's The Feminine Mystique, which is credited with sparking the second wave feminist movement in this country, campus feminism has become a part of the university establishment. Campus feminists have secured academic departments, centers, and other programs but too often these institutions, and women's studies departments in particular, lack intellectual diversity and a spirit of open-mindedness. They're activists, not academic. Scholarship is compromised when it serves a preconceived point of view and political agenda, ignoring or rejecting women who hold more conservative views about femininity, sex differences, and ways for women to live fulfilling lives. The discipline of women's studies grew out of the women's movement of the 1960s and 1970s. The first women's studies department was created in 1970 at San Diego State University. Note that some of these departments have changed names to include gender and sexuality. There are more than 900 programs in the U.S. with over 10,000 courses and an enrollment larger than that of any other interdisciplinary field and there are programs in more than 40 countries. What exactly is women's studies? The oldest women's studies program at San Diego State University advertises that it, quote, provides opportunities to engage in feminist activism locally, nationally, and internationally. Pay attention to the activism part of the description. This is not unusual in these department descriptions. The University of Michigan Women's Studies Department is described as quote, a diverse intellectual community dedicated to excellence in feminist research, teaching, and activism. And one stated goal is to, and I quote again, challenge power and equities. Activism is again part of this description. Even the website tagline for the National Women's Studies Association reads, leading the field of women's studies in educational and social transformation. I want to go back to the power and equities mentioned in the University of Michigan description. This description of the Appalachian State University Women's Studies Program notes power and equities as scholars, and this is in their words, seek to understand the causes, workings, and effects of power inequalities in societies past and present. These power and equities have affected the kinds of claims a male-dominated academy has made about women as well as the lives and opportunities of women and men. This focus on activism makes women's studies suspect as an academic field. It's activist, not academic. Armed with a predisposition to view the relationship between the sexes as one of power and equity and male dominance, the proponents of women's studies aim to exert political influence in the larger world. These departments emerged partly because of a concern that other academic fields ignored or distorted the experiences of women. Now, many students are eager to take classes on the history of feminism and learn about how women gained rights in this country, such as the right to vote. These academic pursuits may be foiled, however, when teaching becomes replaced by social organizing and serious scholarly inquiry is replaced by an unquestioning political agenda. While this can be a problem in any field, it seems particularly pronounced in the field of women's studies. Scholarship is compromised when it serves a preconceived point of view and political agenda. Also, note that an academic degree becomes less valuable when critical thinking skills aren't taught. Let's turn to women's centers. Women's centers are another campus institution with an activist history. There are hundreds of campus-based women's centers at colleges and universities throughout the United States. 
Most of these centers emerged as an outgrowth of the women's movement of the 1960s and 1970s, and activism infused women's centers from the beginning. To get women to advocate for change, women first had to become aware of their second class status. Women's willingness to share their personal experiences quickly became a political instrument, consciousness raising, which was used to build the movement by making women aware of the presumed oppression they faced. College campuses were one of the most popular places for this activity, and women's centers were created in part for this purpose. In a 1988 survey, half, yes, half, of the founding directors interviewed had academic credentials, while the other half had a background in administration or activism. While activism has more of a place in women's centers than in women's studies departments, it's problematic when either institution becomes closed-minded and a vehicle for one political agenda. I became interested in this topic after an experience I had at the University of Virginia's Women's Center. During the summer before my third year of college, I interned on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. It did not take long for me to realize how much I enjoyed this environment, a city packed with smart, politically-minded women, many of whom are conservative. And rather than throwing out the Republican and Democratic one-liners, my female colleagues were eager to talk about the issues of the day and how the proposals was go were going to affect them as women. It was exhilarating to hear speakers and staffers explain a 500-page bill, and it was also eye-opening to see how these women organize their lives. I returned to the University of Virginia that fall and sought out an environment like what I had found in D.C. With more than 500 student clubs at UVA, I thought it would be easy. There was a club for just about any activity. Take a look at your club databases on campus. But what I found was disappointing to say the least. After my database search failed, I saw a sign for the Women's Center. Wow, I thought, this could be what I was looking for. I figured it would be open to all women. I called, earnestly expressed interest in learning more, and scheduled an appointment. I soon discovered just how wrong I was. I arrived at the UVA Women's Center to find a middle-aged feminist faculty member ready to show me around. And as we chatted, she told me enthusiastically about their work and tried to get me to sign up. As the tour went on though, I began to get the impression that the Women's Center programs were not exactly neutral and actually had a liberal slant. At the end of the tour, I asked her, wouldn't the Women's Center consider co-sponsoring a group for conservative young women? Her response, she looked at me like I was crazy, chuckled and said, not here. And that's when I decided to start an alternative, the Network of Enlightened Women, or NEW, as an organization for conservative women on college campuses. The Women's Center should be open to discussions with students with a variety of political philosophies. Based on my work starting and growing NEW, my experience with the UVA Women's Center is not an outlier. Within six months of founding NEW, students began reaching out to me to start chapters. New has spread to campuses across the country and launched national programming. There is a demand that is not being met by the current women's organizations and women's programs on campus. You can learn more and join our network at www.enlightenedwomen.org. Women's studies departments and women's centers are working together to increase their power on campus. Each year, the National Women's Studies Association which includes Women's Studies Department and Women's Center faculty, hosts an annual conference. The 2006 conference included a roundtable discussion titled, How Women's Centers Respond to Conservative Young Women, Dialogue and Action. Think about that. They held a discussion on how to respond to conservative women on campus. The title of this conveys an us versus them attitude and suggests that conservative women are considered outsiders by these institutions. New was specifically mentioned as a basis for the panel discussion. Fortunately, students now have the option of joining New. Each year, millions of students enroll in our nation's colleges and universities. 
women earn a majority of college degrees. Some campuses have a 60-40 female-male ratio. From speaking on campuses, I can tell you that a lot of female students complain about this. We need to rethink women's institutions on campuses today. Too often, women's studies departments lack intellectual diversity and a spirit of open-mindedness. They are activist, not academic. Scholarship is compromised when it serves a preconceived point of view. Now, when you see a problem in your women's institution on campus, I encourage you to start a debate or as that professor liked to say, an uncomfortable conversation.